trying to adjust the phone here to see if it uh, trying to figure out why sometimes the video turns upside down or sideways but anyway guys I'm having some pretty bad luck this week with the phone so um, if the video turns upside down or sideways you know what to do all you have to do is go to the orientation and fix it and you'll be able to see the video better all right so let's get started we're gonna do some figure drawing and maybe we'll do some faces because I want to correct um, you know these drawings here I'm not too happy with uh, looking back at it you know what I mean I gotta fix a little bit the face and then I might do this one again and then I gotta fix the jaw over here that doesn't look so good so I love the drawing it's just the jaw does not look so good so I'm gonna fix that but first I want to show you guys uh, this book it's really great it's by Glenn Fabry now I showed you before another book by Glenn Fabry and how to draw anatomy for fantasy and it was sort of like a fantasy book um, I might go back and um, probably do a video on that book again which because it, the book is fascinating and uh, also the techniques the methods so this book doesn't really have too much um, you know methods or techniques it's m mainly reference and that's what we need when we do reference so the book is all about you know poses positions I did this I'm gonna show it to you you know vertically because the phone is vertically so and let me focus this a little better so what I like about the book is the um, it has you know great texture you know the paper quality is good it's a little thick you know so it's not so bad and it's got a lot of great poses here let me get, put this out of here because that's the next book I want to we're going to do some reference from the Andy Smith book so this is a great book when you're doing you know reference drawing and stuff like if you can't find a good position to do you could actually do your own position and you can draw some of these muscle details and um, Glenn Fabry he does some fantastic uh, drawings of figures and stuff let me see I think it says it right here he's done stuff for um, yeah Marvel Comics he's known for his work on DC Comics vertical imprint Fabry is also the artist of Birds and Prey written by Chuck Dixon and Daredevil human target yeah he's done stuff for Marvel and DC that's him right here I think he's British because it says it in the other book and he, like always you know he uses the uh, skeletal and what we're gonna do today is we're gonna draw use reference from this book using all kinds of techniques like for example this is a a great pose right here to do and believe it or not this book um, is about like 10 years old believe it or not I got this like way way back 10 years ago and since I don't look at it that much you know um, everything has to do you know time you know if you have time you get to see all the books that you have but now that I'm looking at this again I really really appreciate it because it's a very good book it's very realistic the poses you know and Fabrizio if you're watching this man you'll probably love this book 
This is very good, especially when it comes to realistic figure drawing. Or any of my friends on Facebook, if they're seeing this, they're gonna love this. This is a great pose right here. So I'm gonna show you pretty quick because I wanna get started with, uh, you know, figure drawing and uh, some anatomy, some methods that I've been practicing. And we're gonna do also, we're gonna do Romero's technique and we're gonna do, um, Uh, Gil Kane's method in drawing figures. So I got several here that we're going to study and we're going to review it. And we're going to practice doing all this cool stuff here. I can't promise you that I'll probably do the whole book. We'll pick some great poses here that we can actually do. So these are all drawings that he's done in art classes. There's a lot of parts here that you have to read. It's very important to read every single page there is. That way you guys get an idea what to do. That's a good pose right there. It's always good to practice every type of um, pose and position that you see. You can go maybe in a gym where people do gymnastics and, you know, do your reference from there. Or get magazines of sports magazines, football players, bodybuilders, tennis players, wrestlers. Also, you can get a lot of reference from books from wrestling. All you have to do is Google all this stuff. That's me. I did some stuff some techniques that's a good pose right here he's like he's doing the push-ups or something <clears throat> like something like what Frank Vizetta would do. Great poses, different positions. It's a great book. It's pretty thick. It's got a lot of pages. You can tell this guy is more like a professional artist. Years of practice of drawing, you can tell he's got good quality art. Very good uh, pencil drawing here. Fantastic renderings. I did this right here. That's a great pose right there to do. All right, let's get started. Um, Cause I'm dying to show you some great techniques, how to draw the figure. 
And we're going to do a couple, a couple of methods here. I think this is sort of like uh, he used scribbling on this over here, not really sure. But we're going to try it out anyway when we get to this. That's a great pose to do right there. So let's pick a great pose to do. Uh, maybe we'll do something simple. Uh, something that's more... Because I want to do something more like... Um, like something like that with a little bit for shortening. Okay, so let's get some paper. Let's get my pencils ready here. Sharpener. Penciling here, eraser, and per maybe we'll use a marker for this too. Because what we're gonna do is we're not gonna like finish the drawing. We're just gonna basically, you know, study how to do the positions, how to do the pose, and how to master the mat, you know, the technique. So let's get some paper. Then after this, I definitely got to crash because I got to work tonight, unfortunately. But I have my two days coming soon, this Sunday and this Saturday. Sorry, this Saturday, this this Sunday and Monday, two days in a row. So I got to wait like probably three more days. All right, so we're going to do uh, this one right here. We'll start with this one and then maybe we'll do this one right here. So... Um, We'll study a, a curve. You see, she's got like a curve here. And this leg is coming out this way. So we want to capture that. We'll do the curve. Like that. the body right there you can tell she's got uh, a lot of muscles this arm goes back this way and this arm goes back here and then the head is I always leave it for last do the hair So it looks a little bit like the pose right there. So, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna start rendering. Always work with the you know the torso and the pelvic area, which is the hip area. And we have the form right there, and we do a big V shape right there. So. V shape will go like up to here and we'll do very loose outlines even if it's small but don't worry about it you're going to shape it afterwards and we start here It's getting too cold in here. I gotta have to close the vents. Hold on a second. Okay. 
Yeah, even if I close the vents, you still feel the air, but not as strong when it's opened. It's just too much cold air, even though it's crazy hot outside, but I just don't like to, the cold so much. And then we got her breast right here. And we add more, more form on her body. See? We could fix the head a little better. So it looks a little bit like her, see? Not that much, but just a little bit. All right, so let's erase this and let's do another method. And we're gonna use the, you know, the same pose, but we're gonna try another method. Okay, so we're gonna use um, this one right here. We're gonna try that one. That's another one I've been practicing on. And that's one is, that one is from Marzulu. So we'll do the same pose, the same gesture, you know, the center line. And then this will be the upper part of her body. And then this will be her hips right here. And then the V shape, like that. And then we do the sort of like the sockets. Like that, see? And then we start doing, you know, loose cone shapes for the legs. Straight down. And then another one right here. And then the other leg this way. And the head. And the shoulders. So what we did here is that this is what we did. We did the gesture line, the center line. We started working with the upper part of her body, the shape of her hips, the V shape, the, you know, the sockets where the legs are going to come out and cone shapes like that. But Robert Marzulu did it like this, but he didn't use cone shapes. I, I usually use cone shapes because that gives me a better understanding of the shape of the leg. But you could do it, you know, with the stick lines like he does. He does stick lines. And the breasts will be around here. There's her shirt right here. And then Her head right there and we could do her hair so it has the same pose the same position but what we're doing here is we're actually experimenting with uh, different methods and techniques it's sort of like the waist comes in a little bit. And this, since she's, you can tell we hear that there's meat coming out, flesh. And this one is coming in, and this one is a little bit different, so. Now, of course, this is his drawing, so we don't really know how the real person actually looked like. But like I said, this book would actually help you do, you know, 
good poses. So it will give you a sense of direction of how to do different poses. Okay, so we're going to do... <coughs> We're going to try this one right here, and um, you start off, you know, with a basic, basic um, gesture, and what we're going to do here is, um, we're going to do uh, this method right here, and see how this works out. So, I got to look at the, her body. So what I would do is I would do a center line going straight down like this. And of course, another line going out this way. And then a curved line because she's moving her arm this way. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so let's let's give this one a, a try out here. So I'm going to do the center line and work out with the top of her torso. And then a circle. This one is gonna be different now. And do the shape of her hips. <clears throat> The next thing we're gonna do is the joint. And it's coming straight down this way. So if you want, you could actually visualize where that other joint is gonna be. So you make a line like this. And then the other joint comes out here. And it looks kind of foreshortening a little bit. now. <clears throat> this didn't come out so good because this has to be fixed a little bit, so I'm going to make it better. If you notice, it's kind of too small, so we're going to do that better. So we can do a oval for this shape right here that you see. We can do the oval, see if that works. And of course, the leg is going back. Now, just like I was experimenting here, I'm going to do sort of like um, underwear. It's like the underwear technique, just to cover this whole thing here. So I'm going to do the underwear technique. Like that. Like that. And I can start working with the outlines of the rest of her leg all the way straight down. Let me lower this light is too bright, I think. Hold on. Maybe this is better. Yeah. Let me see something. No. This is more better. And then this arm is going a little back here and she's got the other arm first I want to work with the shoulder here and then I'm going to visualize the arm on this position right here <clears throat> but I could do pretty much like Romero does that he actually does the forms like that if I want and this part right here goes up this part of the arm goes up this way and her head is sort of like leaning, leaning a little bit down closer to the um, her shoulders, something like that. So let's look at the. You can see how it's a little bit close. Let me erase this a little bit more, just to get that done right. Her head would be this way.
Um folha. So we did the actual pose. Now let's see if we can do this one and we'll use another technique for this. Let's pick a good one here. Let's do 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 Actually there's another one I did here, which is this one. Let's do the Ed Foychuk to do that. So let's turn the page. Actually, we'll use a clean page. Okay, so let's do that same position. Or maybe we'll do another one. Let me see. Hold on. Kind of got lost here now. And believe it or not, some of these poses could be hard to do. So if you ever, if you guys ever get this book, um, practice doing all kinds of poses. Because the book is going to show you all kinds of poses. So we're going to try out um, this one right here. <clears throat> and what should we use for this one? We'll use the uh, Ed Foychuk technique. Underwear technique. And I just want to make sure this I get this right. And we can start working with our legs. This arm's going this way. So we're, we're getting so far the pose right there. So now what we do is we start. Let me what's that other pencil that I had? I had it here someplace. It's my um. I will just use this one for now. Let's just sharpen it a little bit. So now we're going to get the general shape, the form of her body. And very carefully, we're going to start from the top. We'll do the head. Please excuse the noise in the background, but you know, these people don't listen. They've been told <clears throat> several times, several times to keep the dog inside the house, especially when I sleep in the daytime, but they don't listen, so. Unfortunately, this is not my house. This is my brother's house, but if this was my house, trust me, I will make the rules.
It's amazing how they keep their dogs um, outside in the heat. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so far, it looks a little bit like the pose, except I didn't do too many details, but it's not bad. I mean, it came out pretty good. And again, guys, <clears throat> I'm not a professional, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like a beginner like everybody else. Even though I've been drawing all my life, the only problem is that now is when I'm starting to use different techniques and methods. Before, I used to draw without methods. I would just do it out of my head. Again, I would read books, you know, study books. But, you know, when you know the methods and techniques, um, it, everything seems to be more easier to do, see? So it came out pretty good. So that's the um, Ed Foychuk, the way he does his figures. So let's do another one. Let's do this one right here. <clears throat> and uh, we'll do this, this pose right here. All right, so we'll do this pose. This leg coming forward. This leg coming a little bit foreshortened. Right there. And we'll do the rest of her body. I noticed somebody gave me a thumbs down <laughs> on one of my latest, but you know, I re that really doesn't bother me because, you know, I'm not a professional, you know. Um, I think I have an idea who did it. It could be several people, one of my friends on Facebook, um, they're, they're not too happy with me or something. Or it could be my friend from Argentina that I actually blocked her because, um, you know, she never listens. She's always into that, um, that Santeria crap, which I don't really believe in. And uh, she's uh, really upset because I, I blocked her. So I'm pretty sure she's seeing my videos <laughs> on YouTube. Um, but the thing is, you know, she's trying to, you know, force me or trying to convince me that, you know, spirits exist 
or that witchcraft exists or voodoo exists. And I really don't believe in that crap. You know what I mean? Like I mentioned on my other videos, um, that it ruined my, my family's life. Not that that shit exists. It's because believing in, in such nonsense, you know, you actually would believe that you have a spirit on you or some crap like that. And you know, th those are all stupid superstition crap that I'm not going to fall for. You know what I mean? A lot of people leave, believe in that crap, but I don't. I have plenty of experience. So I think it's her that actually gave me, I don't know, I really know, I think it's her because even if I blocked her from Facebook or from WhatsApp, um, she could still see my videos on YouTube. So she's angry because she even said she was going to do some type of witchcraft on me. <laughs> oh man, bring it on, bring it on because I don't believe in that crap. So yeah, it, it is what it is. You know, if you really believe that that people could actually do damage to you with voodoo, I mean, you're, you're never going to progress because you're actually going to constantly, just like what my mom went through, she kept believing in that crap and she couldn't even succeed in her life because she thought that she would have, you know, some type of ghost near her or spirit. That's the same thing she thought about me. So, you know, you gotta, people, you know, people gotta wake up. So, so I think it's the Argentine that actually blocked me because I don't really believe in her nonsense. And I blocked her, of course, so she's, she's really pissed off. So, so yeah, could be her that gave me thumbs down. But anyway, whoever gave me thumbs down, just confess, you know, confess. You didn't like the video, tell me. Maybe I can do something better. I don't know. But I have a feeling it's her. Because it happened, because I blocked her, like, I would say, like, like almost a week or something. And, uh, you know, we had a thing going on, you know. Well, the problem is that it just came to the point that she kept talking about all this nonsense, and it reminded me all the things that I went through with my mom and my family with all this stupid nonsense, stu superstition crap. You know, they cut your hair or they take a lock of your hair and they do with witchcraft on you, all that crap. You know what I mean? So uh, I don't believe in that, you know? So I'm, like I said, I'm 100% um, I'm atheist. My mom believes in that crap and a lot of Hispanics believe in that, but I don't. And I think that I think that's why um, it could be her. It could be her that gave me thumbs down. I don't know. I have a feeling it could be her, but I don't care. I'm not gonna let that bother me. I'm gonna do my best, you know, to do better videos. Okay, so now that I did, you know, um, it's not exactly this position, but because I did it a little bit different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a V shape right in the center of where the, the balance line is, where the hip area is. So a B, a, not a B shape, a V shape, like this. So that V shape is gonna help me form the rest of her body, see? Like that. And I can use ovals if I want, just to give it shape. And uh, I'm going to make her arm, this arm go this way, pretty much like you see over here. So it's not exactly the same pose because the, the legs are sort of like the stance. For some reason or something, I mean, he did it this way. I don't like that pose, but, you know, I'd rather just do a, a, a sort of like a superhero stance. right there then then always leave the head for last so this is what I did people I did the stick line the stick gesture then after I did that I did a V shape V shape like that did the limbs 
then I usually leave the head for last right there. And then simply I start shaping the body. This whole V shape here is going to actually help me form the whole contour of the body. See? Like that, see? Like that. And then the shoulders, her arms, this way and right here. So. There you go. So you have an idea right there. That's a good technique to use. Okay, so let's do this one, what we did before. We did this technique over here. Let me just do this in pencil here better. We'll do this one again and we'll find another pose. See if we can find something simple here. Let's do, let's do this pose right here. It looks pretty interesting. So, so I just gotta open the book really good. Again, the gesture, like always. Shoulder, torso, and do the um, an oval for the hip area. Now, I can do the form of her hip this way. Let me use this pencil better. It's more comfortable to use. So, I'm going to look at the crotch area right here. There's a big sort of like a V shape, you see a V shape here. So I'm gonna do that V shape like this. And then from that V shape right around here, I'm gonna do joints coming out this way. And her leg is coming out this way. And then her other leg coming out this way. And then, since she's twisting this side, I want to make sure that I have her arm coming down this way and her other arm coming this way. So we have so far, you know, the gesture. The only thing that we didn't do here is her crazy hairstyle here. And I think he really exaggerated on that hair, I gotta admit. But we're gonna do the same thing in order for the pose to look good. Okay. And her face is kind of like turning this way, kind of. So I'm gonna do this in ink. So you guys could see more clear what I did here. The V-shape, then the joints, the legs. And when I do the limbs, I sort of like give it shape. So that kind of helps me figure out the size of the leg and the size of the bottom part of the leg. It's like you're giving shape. You can actually use cone shapes like this. That'll give it a very good understanding how the anatomy is going to look. And then her head. She's looking this way. Her hair. So all I got to do now is start from the core of the body, which is the torso. And, you know, very carefully, just look at the way the form of the body, the way he gave it form. You can tell he did a lot of outlines, um, but that really doesn't matter because that's how a lot of artists actually work. They do, 
you know, they kind of like go off, but they actually fix it afterwards. So since I'm, I've been drawing for a long time, I can actually see all these shapes. Very simple, you know. And like I said before, you, your mind is going to be able to see all this. And it has nothing to do with, you know, spiritual powers or anything like that. It's just the mind. The mind is very powerful. You can see all these shapes. You can see all the shapes you want to do. And as you go along, you're going to see more shapes until you get your whole figure done. And that's where a lot of artists actually learn from by using their mind. You use your mind, you visualize all these shapes, and trust me, you're going to come out with some awesome drawings. So that came out pretty good. Not so bad. So we're going to do the same pose using the Romero technique. Because I really like using the Romero te uh, technique. But this case is going to be more like a female. So we're going to actually do a female. Um... which we are doing a female, but we're gonna use the method, uh, the Romero method, to do the female. Oh, this pencil is too, sh too sharp. It's very different, I can tell. The balance line for the shoulder, and then we'll do a balance line for the hip area. So what Romero does is he does, you know, a circle for the hip area and this is going to be a woman of course and what he does is he starts um, doing lines for the leg but sometimes you know Romero actually does the form instead of using stick figures you know stick lines but I'm doing something that's more <clears throat> practical <coughs> something that he actually uses a lot you know And I've seen a lot of his sketches that he works like this sometimes using stick lines. So I'm going this way. I'm gonna do this in ink because sometimes penciling, you can't really see all the details. I'm doing it exactly how I started. So now, what Romero does, pretty much like I do, let me, let's do the hair. He starts from the top. Does the outline of the figure. Remember that the torso of the woman is a little bit smaller, so you don't want to make that mistake. And the hip is big, of course. Every woman's hip, not all, but some of them are pretty wide. And he starts bringing out the forms from the hip area. All the way down to the legs. And over here also, from here. All the way down to the leg. And then the crotch area. And then we'll do the breast. Okay. 
So we got a perfect, well, not so perfect, but you know, the correct, correct proportion of the female's body. Kind of looks a little bit like it. And don't forget, this is done in a different type of pencil. I think it's done in marker too. Yeah, you can tell it's done in marker. It's like he did the drawing on a, on a gray paper with pencil first and then he did with uh with a marker i think i should do stuff like that too like you know change my my style a little bit that looks pretty neat uh gray paper and then at the same time penciling and inking all right so let's do another method we're going to use the frank springer technique and we're gonna do, let me see, maybe we'll do that same pose by using a different technique. So yeah, that's what we'll do. That's what we're gonna do, the same pose. Let me use this pencil better. Torso. So this is actually the actual um, Frank Springer. He's a classic uh, Marvel artist. He's done a couple of um, comic books, I think for DC and Marvel. So the we do the crotch area, which is sort of like a V-shape. Now what he does is, he does the balance line after he does the form of the body. So he does the balance line this way like that, see? Then he does some dots to indicate that the, the legs are gonna be not this way, but here, coming from the center. Right here, see? That's the way Frank Springer does. But I gotta, you know, be careful and really measure this really good. There you go. Now it looks better. And then this leg over here comes out. But remember, it's in the center. It's like if you were looking at something like uh, the outline like this, and here's the balance line. So the legs are coming out inward like that. So that's what this is over here. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I think you said that. So let's do this in ink. And we're gonna find a thicker pen because I wanna work with a thick, yeah, uh, a thicker pen here. So that way it'll look more thicker. So this is what he did. He did the, you know, the regular center, the shape of the torso and the shape of the hip area. Then he did the V shape for the crotch area. And then he did the balance line, see? Right here in the center. And then he did the limbs. And then this arm. And over here, this arm right here. And then the head coming out this way right there. So it's very simple, like that, see? That's what he did. You could practice, you know, on a separate piece of paper. You know, practice, you know, practice doing these techniques. Very simple. Okay. Now that we got that, now we could add form on her body. Head, neck. And her breast. That. And the bottom part of her leg right here. And then their hair.
her, her leg here. There we go. So we have a, it's not perfect, but a well-proportioned figure. So that's a great technique to do. So if we want, we can do that again. And this time we'll do it backwards on the back side so you get an idea. And you could do this also, like use the back of the page just to, you know, do more poses. This time we'll make the arm stretch out a little bit. So after this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can find a male pose because we need to draw men too. So um, everything has to do, you know, with a lot of practice. Basically, everything is practice. All practice. Okay. Okay. Let's see if we can find uh, a male character. Because I think this is all just most of it. Let's start from the beginning for a second. Well, let me see something. Start from the beginning. I think this is all females. There's got to be here some male characters here. Yeah, it's all female. Because I want to do the Romero technique, but I need a male character. But everything here is females. But you know what? We could actually use a female pose and do a male character. And yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll find like this one right here. This is a good pose. That would be more like if you look at it, it's more like a male pose. And of course, she's she's got muscles. So yeah, let's um let's see if we can do this one. Doesn't hurt to try this one out. So let me get uh, something for my nasal passages. It's just crazy. And it's the, the strong air conditioning, you know? It's like, I was never like this when I was in New York. <sighs> yeah, it's really bad. Put some Vicks. Okay, All right, so let's do this pose using the Romero technique, but we're gonna do the male figure.
Okay, so now we connect the torso to the hip area and we start in the crotch area right here. Then the leg comes out, then the other leg comes out. And you give it form. You make those forms come out to form the leg. Like that. Now I don't know if this is gonna work, but we're giving it a shot to see if it works. So that would be more of a male figure. Let's try a different approach on this, hold on. We'll do a different approach. <clears throat> the head. The torso. The hip area. This leg right here is throwing me off, so it's not perfectly done. I don't know why, he kind of messed up here. If you look at it, it doesn't look so good here. So we, we could fix that, don't worry. And this part of the leg comes right here. Okay, so now we could work with the shoulders right around here. And I'm not going to do the hand, the arm here yet, because I want to do the structure of the body. So this is going to be a, a male character. I want to make sure I do the proportions right. So I'm not going to do the hand either, either, so because the hand would take a long time. And even though I do need practice, and I, I, I've been observing some, some new methods on hands, and I'm, we're gonna actually study that later on. And if I get early in my job today, hopefully, that girl don't decide to leave early today. Um, then I'll be able to uh, do a longer video. The reality is, is just over here where I live, it's just like right now that dog is barking. And it's kind of hard to uh, function. At least in my in the break room where I work at, it's really quiet, so nobody bothers me. I could do a, a quick video there, and it just here is very impossible. People don't respect nobody. They make too much noise. gets very very it's very frustrating and I want to make good videos but you definitely need peace and quiet you know an artist believe it or not needs peace and quiet to draw it's always been like that I don't think there's an artist in the world that would actually pick up a board and draw where there's a lot of traffic. I couldn't do it. I don't like noise. You know, I, I, I like loud music, yes, but to myself, I actually would put it to myself. You know, I, 
put it in my ears, but on a normal level sound, I don't want to go deaf, because I listen to all kinds of music, but there's people out there that want the whole world to listen to their garbage. So yeah, an artist definitely needs um, peace and quiet in order to draw better, in order to get more improved. And yeah, sometimes, you know, I, I'll do some bit like, you know, I'll draw and listen to music at the same time, which is fun. But music that I really enjoy, you know, that I like. Um, you can actually listen to, you know, classical music is very good when you're drawing faces and people. So you could actually use classical music. So that's sort of like the Romero method, if you want to use the Romero method, it actually works out. All right, so this doesn't have too much um, male characters. So we're going to use the uh, Andy Smith book here. And let's pick a cool pose here. Because this this got a lot of... Um, a lot of cool poses. Even though it's comic book, but it's kind of realistic, the muscles a little bit, you know, it's... I'm gonna pick up a pick a good pose here to do. All right, let's do this one. It's a simple one. We'll do this one, and we'll use the Romero method. We'll use two methods to do this. See how it works out. This dude has got a big chest. I want to make sure you guys can see this. Um, a circle for the hip area. The outline. The joints. For the leg. Join for this part of the leg. And a joint over here, another joint here. And the head is kind of small. And this is sort of like a uh, sort of like a bulky superhero. <clears throat> his leg here so maybe my drawing might come out different so let's see let's see what happens let's you know let's just do the challenge here the hand will be here and the hand if you look at this the hand is all the way up to the thigh here but this is a big guy, so I don't want to do him too bulky. So I'll just do the hand. Usually the hand would be on this level. And another joint for the upper arm. And we'll do a big cone shape there. That kind of gives us a, a better understanding of the anatomy here. So... Now I can start working with the body. Slowly I start working with the outline. Bubble shapes. Curves. Ovals. Outlines. Bubble shapes here. Ovals. All oh, this is all bubble shapes, except that when you're doing the, the uh, shoulders, start with the curve first, and then do the ovals. 
it's more better and you can tell that this he's got these are all bubble shapes like bubble or like kind of like ovals but bubble shapes so you could actually um, refer them to bubble shapes some um, comic book artists has actually explained that the ovals could be either bubble shapes or ovals and then we'll do the rest of the body. So we already have the contour over here, the side of the hip. So now we do a, sort of like, you can see it's sort of like a V shape here, see? It's a V shape and it goes up this way, down this, down like that. So then we do straight down and then we'll do another V shape this way and another V shape there. So, we'll make those legs really big, because he's got big legs. Well, we could do something like this, see? Like that. You're making big curves, like that, see? Like this. And over here also. All the way down to the feet. and the other side of the leg and there we go so it looks a little bit like it except that this character is more shorter and uh, this guy looks a little bit more taller I think I'm not really sure but anyway it looks pretty good so now what I gotta do is start working with all these muscles but I'll start from the top I'll do some more muscle lines and it's always like I said it doesn't hurt to use reference when you're doing muscles use reference it's not gonna you know it doesn't mean that you're cheating it means that you're getting better you're improving your art by using reference don't try to draw from your head because trust me, sometimes it won't come out like you want it to come out. You gotta, you know, use sometimes reference. And if you wanna, you know, draw a realistic face, of course, you're definitely gonna need some type of reference. You could do, you know, characters. Like I mentioned before, you can create characters by using real life photos make like draw regular people from magazines and turn them into mutants with horns anything you want to do you know with uh, big ears elf ears you know say you draw a picture of um tom cruise and you can turn him into some type of cyclops or some type of mutant or something or a mechanical robot half of his face as a robot if you want you know it's, you know the the, mo the the important thing here is just to be you know creative when you're doing your uh, your characters well so far that came out pretty good not so bad okay so we're gonna do this pose here but you can tell that the muscle here is not so perfect because my greatest guess, he did a lot of uh, ovals here. So let's do that. And we'll do it bigger over here. And it's always good to try, you know, a different method to see how it works out. And we'll do the uh, Dan Jurgens method here. And I've shown you guys already Dan Jurgen's book, How to Draw Marvel Characters, which that's a pretty good book. So you could actually study from that book if you guys ever get, you know, ever decide to uh, buy that book. Also, I forgot to mention that when you're doing the head, 
um, especially for a male character, the head is sort of like three heads, like this, see? Three heads. And the shoulder is like around here. Three heads wide, like that. And right here would be the shoulders. I forgot the name of this over here. But anyway, it's just very hard to remember all these names for the anatomy. And I know that's very important when it comes to drawing, you know, superheroes and all that stuff. There goes that dog again. erase this we don't need to All right. okay so we got an idea so I'm gonna do this in ink so you can see the skeletal part of the body Here we go. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to do the rest of the anatomy. The waist right here. And always remember the V-shape over here. We'll do the V-shape. We'll do, if you want, you do a line like this. That would be like the hip area. You know, all you have to do is uh, erase it afterwards. So do the B, the, sort of like a, a curved V shape right there. Not a V shape like this, but you can do something like this. See? To give it that male look of the crotch area. And then from the waist area, you can do ovals if you want. You could do another oval over here. And do more ovals. You know, bubble shapes. It's actually bubble. Bubble, bubble, bubble shapes. Bubble oval shapes. That's what this is. And then do the rib cage, which is the um the abdominals. I think these are called yeah, abdominals. Rib cage, dominoes. All right. So after this, I'm going to crash and sleep. But believe it or not, since that dog is outside barking his ass off. So, I'm gonna have to sleep in the bathroom. And some of my friends actually already know that sometimes I sleep in the bathroom. Now, the reason why I sleep in the bathroom is because the bathroom is further away from all the noise. Because even if I could sleep in my room, I could still hear the dog barking because my window from my room is close to where the dog is barking. And like I said many times, which, you know, um, I told my brother to tell these people to keep that freaking dog inside the freaking apartment, but they don't listen. So I have to sleep in the bathroom. So what I do is I get, you know, some 
like a couch I get the you know the the pillows from my couch from the you know the couch from the living room and just throw it on the floor and put some earplugs and even if I wear earplugs um, in my room or because sometimes I'll sleep in the living room because the couch is pretty comfortable but you can still hear that freaking dog bark um, So it's, it's impossible. You can't really sleep good in a daytime here. And then the people next door, they make so much noise. It's, it's just unbelievable. So yeah, it, it is what it is. But I have patience, you know. And I got to sleep because I got to work tonight, unfortunately. And there is no miracle that I can actually say, you know, that I could say, wow. I win the lottery. This must have been a miracle from God, but I'm not going to be, actually believe. If I ever win the lottery, I'm not going to say it's a miracle. Miracle. It just it had to happen. Like everything happens by coincidence. That's it. There is no God. And that's the way I see it. So that's a great way, you know, using the Dan Jurgens method by using the, the simple skeletal technique. So let's try another method. Uh, let's see. All right, let me see. Uh, I guess we're gonna have to use, I don't know which is better, I think, um, I think this came out pretty cool. I like the way this came out more than this. I don't know. I mean, you guys could leave a comment whether it's either the left or the right. Please let me know which came out more better. Even though it's not finished, but I really think that the proportions came out excellent on this. Even though this is a different pose, you know. Okay, so um, let's do another one. And we'll do this one. I like this uh, pose right here. Now, there is some foreshortening here, so we got to be careful doing the foreshortening. So the way I would do this, I would actually, well, let's, let's practice with this. And actually, maybe we should use a different paper or something. Maybe a clean paper. Well, let's see what happens. An oval. the hip area and we do the joints and a joint over here which is a sort of like a cylinder but it's gonna come out sort of like for shortening so we'll do a big oval all the way to the front shoulder and the arm right there and then the head it's kind of like small because he's got a big body here. The head is small. So we want to capture that. So how do we do that? We do the socket for the head right here. And then we do a small head right there. So we don't want to make that head too big. And then the other arm, let me see, it's going back this way. You can't really tell too much because there's too many blacks here. So you can't really see the shapes. Plus, he's got some type of costume design here. So I really got to be careful with this part. So the arm is coming out this way. Then he's got some type of armory on that part of his shoulder. So 
let's make sure that we capture this and then we'll add now we could do the contour the outline of the shapes of the body So far, so good. Okay, so you can do it this way. Remember that when you're doing the uh, hip area, you're doing the joints, sort of like cylinders, and then you bring out the lines for the legs. And then after that, you do the contour of the rest of the body. But remember, when you're doing foreshortening, you gotta use sort of like a oval to do that foreshortened part just like you see over here, so for shortening. All right, guys, that'll be it. Um, I'll do some more stuff on figure drawing because uh, I know there's a lot of friends of mine on Facebook that needs a lot of help with figure drawing. And uh, frankly, a lot of people have been asking me a lot about figure drawing and hands because I, I definitely got to do stuff on hands. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Oops, I made a mess here. I got to pick this up. Or the uh, the mess I did with the sharpening. I don't know how you call that. The residue from the sharpening. When I sharpened the pencil, it kind of like opened up. That's what I don't like about these ridiculous um, sharpeners that they open so quickly and it makes a mess. All right, guys. Uh, hopefully you like this video and thank you for watching and uh, keep practicing.